angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. guys um happy new year and merry christmas again and we're going to continue talking about the manger and we got the, our manger on our tree here and we talked about mary and joseph and we talked about the angels a few weeks ago with mrs um alder and then we talked about mary and joseph with alex and lizzie mr and mrs wilson and today we're going to talk about this little dude right here this little dude is a shepherd and we got a little sheep here too and I want to so if you want to think about him as I read the Bible verse I'm reading from Luke chapter 2 and I'm going to start with verse 8 and there were shepherds living out in the field nearby keeping watch over the flock by night an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be to all people. For t today in the town of David, a Savior has been born who is Christ the Lord. He will be assigned to you and you will find the babe wrapped in cloth and lying in the manger. Suddenly a great company, that means a whole bunch, of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone back into heaven, we're going to put the angel back in our nativity here, and gone back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go into Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they heard and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who were lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, this is the part we want to talk about. They spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. So they returned. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen for which they had been told. That's what our theme today has to do with. We've got to put our shepherd and our little sheep back for right now. Our theme today is, we welcome the king with our praise. Okay, we welcome the king. Who's the king? The king was this little teeny baby. Little teeny baby was the king that we're talking about here. But this king was born to die. He was born so that someday we could be in heaven someday. And it doesn't get any better than that. But we're going to talk about the shepherds. So first of all, you need to know that shepherds back then... They weren't really respected much. They, not at all, apparently. So I got a picture, there's some art pictures. So we got the angel coming to the shepherd and they're like, oh, look at that, look at that. They weren't really re respected. They were kind of considered the lowly part of the people. Um, and they just weren't, they didn't have a lot of respect. So it was a great thing, here's another picture, that they were who the angels came to. They came to the lowliest of lowly. So if they can come to the lowliest of lowly, they can come to anyone. I even have a picture right here. This is kind of like a modern day shepherd. So this is our modern day shepherd. There are shepherds today. They probably don't wear dresses anymore, but they're not really get dresses, they were gowns, but that's what they wore back then. And the part that we really want to concentrate on is they went and saw the baby, which is really cool. They return praising God and saying, now this is the middle of the night. And they didn't say, oh, well, this is cool. Nice baby. Nice to see him. Okay, bye. And go home. They went through the streets yelling and sc screaming, hey, we've seen the Messiah. We've seen the Messiah. Now, unfortunately, most people heard them and thought, oh, these guys are just out partying or something. But if they really listened, they would have heard that they were welcoming the king with their praise. Come see the Messiah. He's been born. And maybe some people did listen and then, and went and saw the baby too and, and didn't maybe know that this was the Savior of the world. But 
we're lucky because we get to know because God set us the, gave us the Bible and we could read right in there about Jesus. We learned about the angels. We learned about the shepherds, Mary and Joseph, all the wonderful things. It's a great story. And it leads to our redemption, our save, being saved, going to heaven someday because of the ultimate shepherd. Now, we're kind of lucky at our church because, I don't know what lucky, we're blessed, because the name of our church is Our Shepherd. So we know that the real shepherd, the ultimate shepherd, is Jesus. And Jesus, if Jesus is the shepherd, we're the sheep. And we need to follow him. When we hear his voice, we need to follow him. Because he is going to take us to heaven someday. And he left us the Bible so we can learn more about him. And most important, he gave us a really, really important job. And that really, really important job that Jesus gave us is to tell other people about him. So when you see somebody say, hey, do you know what Christmas is about? And they might say, well, or the New Year's about, and they might say, well, just glad 2020 is over. Yeah, that's probably true. But they they might say, well, it's about Santa. Or, and, and that's important too. But you know what? That's not what it's about. It's about Jesus. And not just about Jesus, but about praising him and letting everybody else know about him too. That's our job. Whether we're three years old or two years old or old, old like me or really old like grandparents or teenager, whatever age you are. You have the right and the privilege. It's a privilege. Like you have a privilege and you get, hopefully get to, everybody gets to go back to school tomorrow. I know that our shepherd's going back to school tomorrow. Some of you are going back to school online. That's okay right now. We're, we're hoping for the change. But we know that we, I'm losing papers here, guys. Sorry about that. We welcome the king and the king is Jesus. And it's our job to praise him. We praise him with our singing, we praise him with our praying, and we praise him when we tell other people about him. So don't just sit back and thought, well, i got to wear a mask all the time, I can't tell anybody. You can tell about Jesus with your eyes. And you can talk through a mask and say, hey, did you know Jesus loves you? Did you know that we just celebrated Christmas and it was his birthday? It's a really cool time. We might get presents, but it's really, we've got the best present in the world, and that was Jesus. And we want to tell everybody about him through our praise. So, please pray with me. Father God, thank you for giving us the job to praise you and help us to tell everyone we meet about you because you are so great and so powerful and so wonderful. And Lord, we just want everyone to be in heaven with you someday. Thank you for the gift of your Savior. Thank you as we celebrate the new year and all the wonderful things that go with that. But Lord, we thank you that you are with us, whether it's 2020 or or 2021, whatever year it is, Lord, you are here and you are in control. And we thank you for that. Help us to remember to give you praise and honor and glory. So there's a song I want to sing about the king. And it's going to be me, so that's kind of scary. But you can sing it with me. And it's really easy. It goes like this. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, Alleluia, Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Alleluia, Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Whoops, Alleluia. And then you get to go faster and faster. We'll, only go, we'll sing it one more time, a little bit faster, okay? King of kings and Lord of lords, glory. Alleluia, King of kings and Lord of lords, glory. Alleluia, Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Alleluia, Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Alleluia. Okay, go sing another song, and then we have a little activity, which is really a way that you can praise God in another way by helping with a little, with something, I don't know, what you can use to maybe talk about Jesus' love for you. All right, here we go. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky Cattle are lowing, 
look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Okay, so for our activity today, it's going to be a little bit different. We're not going to actually make something, although you might want to. Um, I want you to look at this. Do you know what this is? You know what this is. You probably have one. If you haven't had one recently during the holiday season, well, then that's okay. You can always go ahead and, where is it? You can draw one because I have an activity I want you to do with this candy cane. Now, here's some things about the candy cane. They're, they're usually, now I know they come in all different colors now, but originally they came in white and red. And they represent, the white is the purity of Jesus, and the red stripes are for his blood that he shed on the cross. That's how, a, when they originally made, the peppermint flavor re represents hyssop, the hyssop plant that used to be, that was used in the Bible, the pure event purity in the Bible. Uh, there's other meanings. So if you look at it like this, it's a J for Jesus. So that's kind of cool. And we did the stripes. December 26th was National Candy Cane Day, in case you needed to know that. The largest candy cane was made in 2011 and was 63 feet tall. That's really big. Um, my job for you is I want you to either draw or get a candy cane. And I want you to go to somebody and I want you, we talked about the J for Jesus. And if you want to give them the candy cane, that'd be cool. You just want to tell them about the candy cane, but tell them, it isn't just a piece of candy, whoever you're talking to, grandma or grandpa or your neighbor. It's not just a piece of candy. It tastes good, but it represents the purity of Jesus, the blood that he shed for us, and the fact that we're going to be in heaven someday. So next time you take a candy cane off the tree, or next year when you put them back on the tree since it's already January, remember that, hey, it's got a lot of meaning. And you know what? The biggest meaning is that Jesus loves us, and it doesn't get any better than that. And that's our our activity day. So you go tell somebody about the candy cane, about the red stripes, and about the white purity of Christ, and the J for Jesus, the shepherd's staff, and it was made to represent and remember that Jesus loves us and cares about us. And he died for us so that we can go to heaven someday. So you go to find somebody you love, or some maybe just somebody you know, and tell them, Hey, I want you to really know about what the candy cane was so that next year when you go out and buy candy canes, they're not just a piece of candy. They have a message. All right? Blessings on your day. Will you pray with me, please? Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the new year that we just celebrated. Lord, help us to know that you are in control. No matter what's going on in the world, you are in control. You loved us so much that we can feel the sweetness of a candy cane because of your love. And we know that you died and rose again so that we can be in heaven someday. And the shepherds ran and praised you. And we want to run and praise you too in everything we say and everything you do so that our life, that your life can shine through our lives. Thank you, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You have a great day. And guess what? It's back to school pretty soon. Blessings. Joy to the world.